your girl is all types of dumb for spending almost $50 on Lancome makeup remover. Did I think money was growing on trees? Am I that bougie to be getting paid so well to be spending $50 on makeup remover? Mm, no. I need help. Mm -mm. And you guys don't want to know how many times I said lamb comb, lamb, lamb, can, whatever cone before starting this video just so I don't butcher it. And I 100% butchered it. Welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new here, my name is Tashi. Thanks for clicking on this video. If you end up enjoying the content, please make sure to go hit that subscribe button and become a part of the family. For today, as you guys can tell by the title, I'm going to be giving you the products I regret purchasing. The products I'll probably never purchase again. The products that were hyped up by everyone, everywhere. And the products that I just didn't have common sense when purchasing. So you guys don't make the same mistakes I do. Let's get right on into it. For all my Victoria's Secret lovers out there that love their beauty products, guys, I'm not hating. I love almost all Victoria's Secret beauty products, all types of products Victoria's Secret has to offer. But what I hate the most is their lip glosses. I hate Victoria's Secret lip glosses. This lip gloss that I purchased, no, no, like, mm -mm. I hate the consistency, I hate the color, and this is not the first one I purchased from Victoria's Secret, this is the second or third, I decided to give it another shot. It's too sticky, it's so thick, and honestly, the color isn't that pigmented either. For a lip gloss that's around like $15 or $14, you'd expect to be better quality, but no, this fully just feels like a cheapy drugstore lip gloss. If I'm paying almost $20 for a lip gloss, it better be pigmented, it better apply nice, and Victoria's Secret lip glosses just don't do that. Like, I could pay five more dollars and get a nice quality pigmented MAC lipstick. So, all types of Victoria's Secret lip glosses, trash. No, not buying that again. For the next product, this is a clothing piece. And for all of you Aritzia lovers out there, you guys know. Aritzia has a whole bunch of different leggings. They have their two main brands or their two main type of leggings. I don't know the exact name, but there are the average price of leggings that are around $21, $22, and those are pretty thin. And I believe they are see through. Guys, do the squat test. I'm 99% sure they're see through. So when I went to Aritzia, I'm like, you know what? I need a good quality legging, and I don't want to pay the Lululemon price of $120 something dollars. So I'm going to go to Aritzia. It ended up costing around almost 80, which is pretty close to Lululemon's price. But I'm like, you know what? It's okay. It's a good quality legging. It is thicker. So I'm like, whatever. It's the classic black high waisted. It's very stretchy and it sucks you in, which is so nice. Those are the positives. Guys, I've had this for less than a year. I have worn it maybe five times if that and it's already pants are already peeling peeling whatever you want to call it those little like circle things that your clothing gets when they get old or used or abused as i mentioned before i've only worn these five times why are they peeling peeling they were almost a hundred dollars I've worn them five times. Are you serious? Like, might as well just buy the $20, $30 ones that everyone's talking about on Amazon and not waste your money on Aritzia $80 thick, good quality leggings. I was so disappointed. 
Like, I honestly expected a lot better from them. I love Aritzia. I get a whole bunch of stuff from there. But these leggings are just not it, hunty. Like, no. No, not again. Maybe the $20 pair, if you don't care if they're a little see-through, fine. That's a cheaper alternative. But spending almost $80 and for them to pill like this? No. That's not okay. I'm unimpressed about that. Mm -mm. And another item, as most of you already seen on my haul from Fashion Nova, if you haven't, I'll link it above. Those are my white jeans that were see-through. Woo! We love this for us, sister. We're living our best life. This was a lesson for me. Not only an item I regret purchasing, but a big lesson. Do not buy very, very light wash jeans or pants that look thin from an online retailer that does not have a store location and that will be a hassle to return because most of us will not go return it and it's such a disappointment when it comes in being see-through or just having some type of issue with it and you know you don't want to return it because it's just a hassle mad waste of money mad waste of time no no light wash thin pair of pants for me anymore for the next few things i'm going to talk about these are things that I've already used up because they were too expensive not to use up or thrown away because it was not okay. That is Lancome Makeup Remover. This makeup remover is talked about all over social media, beauty bloggers, everything. Everyone raves about this makeup remover. Not gonna lie guys, this makeup remover is amazing. I like it. It works so nice. It removes your makeup like it's butter, which I love. But it just being makeup remover, it almost ended up being around $50. And you can probably get one for a quarter of the price that does the same job. Just because it's a name brand and it's you're basically paying for the name as well, I can't believe I actually purchased it. I wanted to see what the hype was about. It, it was worth just checking out for the hype, but I do regret spending that much money on it. Like I don't think I would ever purchase it again because it is pricey for just a makeup remover. I did do some research and I did try some um, brands to see what gets the same type of results as the Lancome makeup remover. And those are just the no name drugstore brands so i know for my canadian viewers out there rexall and shoppers drug mart has like a blue bottle of just plain makeup remover for like seven dollars it looks like a knockoff of it and it works just as well like it's probably identical and for those of you american viewers out there a cvs actually has one that looks exactly like the Lancome one. It's like about half the size and it's in a blue bottle as well, like a plastic one. And it's around $5. It also works identical to the Lancome one. So guys, buy the dupe. I promise you, you won't even see a difference. Because buying makeup remover for $50 is a whole nother type of ish that I should not be doing. For the next product, for all of you who used to or still love the St. Ives Apricot Face Scrub. I used that face scrub for years and years and years. I loved it. I used it like 10 years ago. I used it like a few years ago. Guys, I lived by that face scrub. Whenever I would finish using it, my face felt so soft. But then I got a few people telling me it's bad for your skin. I stopped using that a while ago. And I wanted to listen, but I love this product so much. It didn't show any issues with my skin that I didn't listen. And then all of a sudden, I saw all these different bad articles on St. Ives face scrub. And it just says all the damage it could do to your skin long term because of the broken walnut shells that are used in this scrub. It can end up scarring your skin and causing so much damage that I completely didn't do my research on and I ignored, which I completely regret now. Of course, right now, I don't really see anything wrong. Like there are some 
like one or two scars I may see, but I don't know if that's from it. Um, they all say long term, and I'm just I just stopped right away. I bought a big like those tub ones, and I threw the whole thing out. That day I bought it, I used it a few times, and then I saw all these articles, and I read these articles. I was so paranoid. I threw the whole thing out. No, we don't want to damage our skin. We want it looking flawless from day one to the last day. So no, I'm off of St. Ives. The only thing I do buy from St. Ives is their like hand creams and like the soaps for like face wash and stuff that don't really have much chemicals in them. So that's fine. I don't, no, not doing that anymore. For the next item, this is electronic slash tech item that I regret buying. And for those of you who have a version of this or this, um, and it's doing you well, you do you, hunty, but I'm not a fan. This is just an Asus Classic laptop. I don't know exactly what version of this it is. Um, the Asus, like, Veo Book Max. Yeah, Asus Veo Book Max. This is by far the worst laptop I have ever used in my existence. And honestly, it's just a lesson for me to invest and do more research. At the time, I bought, guys, I bought this less than two years ago and I already want to throw it out because it's so trash. The battery doesn't last more than like an hour or two. It randomly shuts off, it randomly freezes, it's always lagging. These are problems people get in a laptop that's like approaching five years, if that. I haven't even had this piece of garbage for two years and it's had these problems and when I reached out to the amazing company they basically said like oh if you send it in or if we check it you're gonna have to pay a hundred and something blah blah you're gonna have to do this this that this laptop isn't even worth fifty dollars because of how garbage it is and honestly my family has had Asus laptops before they've been okay but after experiencing this and then seeing some of the other laptops now kind of deteriorating, no. I'm staying away from ASUS products for life. This was the biggest waste of money. And now I have to probably this year or next year go buy another laptop because of how trash this is. I can't even express the amount of pain this laptop has put me through in the first year of me buying it the first year it fully just hit a year and it, all these issues started happening no stay away from asus guys because it's not just this laptop i know and i've heard of so many other problems with asus products no no save your coins save that coin go invest go do research no for asus for life to be honest i'm very salty about this purchase and product out of all of them for the last product that I wanted to talk about, and this is just in general, like it's not really a specific one, but in general. For those of you who live in colder places, for example, Canada, when it's winter, having an essential good quality jacket is really important. And over the years, I've learned that. But a few years ago, I would buy these jackets from like cheaper stores that aren't the best quality and would never keep me warm and would always wreck after the first year or first season of me using it. For example, buying them from like Urban Planet, from H&M, or even from Forever 21. Not throwing shade at any of those stores, but guys, invest, invest in a good, good winter jacket. Honestly, whether it's a name brand or not, just invest in a good quality winter jacket. You can tell if a winter jacket is good quality by just feeling how thick it is, by seeing how like good quality it is, the stitching. Just pay attention because it doesn't matter what the price is, whether it's really expensive or not. The quality of the jacket needs to be there. I learned over the years cheaping out on a jacket is not okay. I've just been buying Aritia jackets for the last like four or five years and that's all I live by. They're a bit pricier like the cheapest one I believe is around like 300 and something but there is such a big difference in an Aritzia jacket 
compared to a Forever 21 or an Urban Planet jacket. Like, it is such a big difference. It will save you from getting cold, like, just, it will, you'll have it for years on years. Like, when I buy a TNA jacket, Aritzia and stuff, it lasts me for years. I don't get a new one till it's destroyed. But if I buy a Forever 21 jacket, it will last me the season, if I'm lucky, the next season, and it's not even that warm. Don't cheap out. Buy a good quality jacket. I regret, I swear to you, years ago, every single year I'd buy a new winter jacket. Because most of my cheap ones would just wreck. so much more worth spending your money on a jacket that you're going to wear for years on years to come. No matter what the price may be, guys, it's always good to invest in a good jacket. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for staying till the end of this video for those of you who did. And go leave a heart in the comment section below for those of you who made it to the end because you guys are the real ones. Thank you. I truly appreciate it. Hope these tips, reviews, feedback about these products help you guys out so you don't waste your coin and don't make the same mistakes I did. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys, and until next time.